Have you ever thought just how boring or ridiculous news commentary is today? Welcome to The Real Jacks Podcast with Jim and Larry. The Real Jacks Podcast. From crime and politics to entertainment, you can expect something different. Now, let's get real, Jacks. Hey, welcome back to Real Jacks with Jim and Larry. Today's special guest is Representative Cord Bird. But before we start talking to Cord, Larry's got some ads he's got to read. Yeah, I was told, uh, Larry, you might want to cut those down a little bit. You're, you're talking forever about the ads, so we're just going to hit them pretty quickly. Uh, Extreme Wings, that's my new employer. Uh, they've got four locations. You've got Southside Boulevard, Northside, uh, Westside, and St. John's County. Family sports, restaurant, and grill. Great food. Uh, tremendous tea. And uh, speaking of tremendous, we've got tremendous barbecue. That's on the west side at 8927 Herlong Boulevard, open since 2007. Full barbecue menu. Everything's homemade, and they can cater any, any size uh, party or event. Advanced window tent, 5024 Sunbeam Road. Um, Ricky Tillman's the owner. Been there over 26 years. Uh, they can tend any kind of vehicle, mm-hmm. home, or business. Excellent work. Yeah, they do excellent work. They do all my vehicles. Uh, Secure One Alarm or Secure One Protection Services is Jim's business. Yeah, Secure One Protection Services, your number one choice for protection since 1986. That's it. Right, that's, and that's, well done. Hey, good. we whizzed through that well, in I like, got two like more. 45 seconds. I got two oh. more. Yeah, I know. I, I thought know. we broke a record there. Well, we, we did break a record, but we want to add to it. So, uh, Norm Brewer was on yesterday. He was a guest host. and uh, did Great a, guest host. Did a, did a phenomenal job. And Norm's going to, you know, he went to work for Double Roofing. Um, was bought out by a friend of his. Uh, Norm.DoubleRoofing at gmail.com is his email. And uh, his number is 904-910-5728. Anything roofing you need, uh, get with Norm. He'll do a great job. He's the man. Shannon Judge, uh, you know, Jimmy's one of my best friends. Shannon retired from the school board, and she works for the Legends of Real Estate. She's starting a real estate. Uh, she's a real estate agent now and works for a broker. Uh, we're going to get, obviously, some uh, graphics from her, and we'll put that in the, in the program as well. So Legends of Real Estate is Audrey Lackey. She's the she's broker. broker. Okay. She is my son's uh, – her, her son is my son's best friend. Really? Yeah. Small, Small world. world. It is. <laughs> exactly. She's, and she's a great lady. Yeah, and they know what they're they know what they're doing over and, there. Uh, and and Shannon's probably one of the hardest workers you'd ever know. I mean, she's phenomenal, and uh, she's got to be tough to deal with Jimmy Judge. You know, as long as she's dealt with him, you know, yeah. as long as we've been together. So that's yeah. that's it on ads. And obviously today we've got Representative Cord Bird, who I've known a long time. Um, I've called him for advice before. Uh, the guy that kind of helps him with his campaign, Zach Whitson, is a friend of mine. I've talked to him regularly. Um, his his uh, wife and daughter are also in the room, but they're not on camera right now. And we appreciate them coming. And uh, we instead of reading a bio, we kind of we kind of learn as we go throughout this process, Cord. So we just want to kind of get a bio on you. Just you kind of tell us about your background, if you would. Sure. Well, thanks, uh, guys, for inviting me on. I appreciate uh, the time. Uh, so uh, fifth generation Floridian, uh, native of the beaches. Uh, went to move to Miami when I was six, but all the family was still up here. So um, you know, my heart's always been in, in North Florida, and I went to undergrad at UNF. Nice. Uh, went back down to Miami for law school, and then. Uh, Moved back in 07 and hung out a shingle at the beaches, and that's where uh, that's where we live, and uh, so that's kind of the background. I'm a beach native. Oh, very good. Yeah, not a whole lot of us. No, there's not. Yeah. There's not. Born and raised. Jacksonville, that for that for that matter. Yeah, for the whole city. Yeah, raised, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so what you, you know, I've called you. You do a lot of gun law. That, right. I thought, I thought that was interesting. So what do you what do you do as far as gun law? Sure. So um, I'm one of. Uh, I mean, when I say a handful, I mean less than five guys who are what I would consider experts in firearms law and the Second Amendment in the state of Florida. Okay. Uh, so that that's what I do. So everything Second Amendment related, whether it's state or federal court. Um, <clears throat> most uh, so whether it's uh, concealed weapons licensing, purchase denials. Um, we have a robust preemption law, which says that if you know no no government entity can violate the Second Amendment, and if they do, we can we can file lawsuits against them. So that's what uh, that's what I do. I defend people's Second Amendment rights, and sometimes the First Amendment gets uh, thrown in there as well. So uh, yeah, whether it's law or as a as an elected official, you know the Constitution is really important and what we need to be defending, and that's what I do. Outstanding. I know I've called him. I had a cousin that that uh, went away for a little while, and his wife owned a gun. He had some concerns, and I remember calling you about that, and and. Uh, yeah, I think you sent us a letter. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so they, you know, you couldn't take her rights away. Although he 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 was a convicted felon, you couldn't take her rights. And we're going to have him on. Actually, he's he's done really well. Worked for my cousin Steve Leggett, my other cousin James Leggett. So, 
trying to get him on, but you know, the, I always thought that was real interesting that that line of of, of uh, legal right. expertise that, that you and especially the Second Amendment, as much as mm -hmm. everybody in this room is a you know a two A supporter, and, right? And uh, very pro two A, yeah, yeah, very, yeah, all of us. What's the name of the guy that wrote the book? The attorney that wrote the very popular book. Oh, that, it's, that's almost become the handbook for yep. for uh, carriers. Yeah, yeah, uh, Gutmacher. Got, right, right. Yeah. Go, go, yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You ever thought about writing something? And I know there's oh. a guy that's got a face, or no, a YouTube channel in Tampa that's, I don't know if he's an attorney or not, but he knows the laws inside now. Right. And it's, it's become a very popular channel. And, it, and it's almost like a public service channel because a lot of people that have a CCW, they, they're not a hundred percent sure when and where they can carry. And sure. they're, they're, sometimes committing unlawful acts because they're sitting at the bar in a restaurant carrying and they, they think because they're in a restaurant they can carry but they're on the bar side Correct. you can't carry at the bar so right. there probably needs to be a little better education process i think on there does on and we, we, we try to do a lot of that i mean the gun laws are very very complex i mean you have federal and state and uh, a lot of times even even sometimes law enforcement officers not not intentionally mm -hmm. but they just don't they don't know and, uh, you know, I want to make sure, you know, during my time in the legislature that we don't make people accidental felons. I mean, it's one right, thing right. if you're mm -hmm. a bad guy intentionally yeah. doing something yeah. wrong, but you don't carry a gun to Jersey or New York. Right. <laughs> accidentally. <Exactly. laughs> but we don't want to uh, get people uh, caught up. In, uh, and so we had a couple laws this year that we bills we pass. And if you we can certainly talk about those if you want to. Yeah, that's, that's good. I know it's uh, you're right. And it got confusing. Well, I could go, you know, as a police officer, I could go into a gun store. And I can't get a gun. I got a three-day wait, waiting, three waiting period. Still yeah. three-day waiting period. But right. I finally yeah. got my concealed weapons permit, and I don't have to <laughs> right. wait. But, yeah, let's let's get in that. You talked about – so just give us a little history how you got involved in politics, and then we'll get to kind of some of the legislation that you've worked on. Sure. So I got my start back in the 90s doing election law, so working on the side for, for candidates and, and the party to enforce election law. So I was actually um, in uh, Palm Beach County for Bush v. Gore really? in 2000, did some legal work behind the scenes. In 2010, I went out to Reno, Nevada, and, and the, their their party out there asked me to come out and uh, help them because of what we had experienced in Florida. So that was my intro into politics. And then uh, in 2012, ran for the first time, wasn't successful, as what happens to many first-time candidates, and right. then uh, then won in 16 and have been representing uh, House District 11 for the last uh, five years. That's outstanding. You're so, doing a good job, too. Thank you. Oh, yeah, outstanding job. Um, one of the guys I've reached out, you know, I worked off duty to job and I called him about something and uh, just, you know, stuff. And he, he always calls you back. That's that's kind of unusual for politicians these days. But describe District 11. So sure. the parameters of yep. District 11. So all of Nassau County. So the entire – all of Nassau. And so um, uh, the north side, so uh, everything east of Yellow Bluff Road, so all down Heckshire Drive, and then the three beaches. Okay. So that, that's – it's a that's big, big – big, it's a big mm. district. I do yeah. a lot of driving. It's an interesting yeah. cut up, though, the way it kind of carves out most of Jacksonville. Right. Except for the north side and the beaches, and then right. the bulk of Jacksonville is right. in – is that District 12? So there's 12 and 14, 14 right. and then so you have you – know, so there's, there's actually – six representatives um that four four republicans two democrats that have some portion of duval county of just duval of just duval so not necessarily northeast florida but just duval, just duval county. right wow. so I, i'm the only state rep in uh, in nassau county and i can mm. tell you that hilliard and bryceville and callahan are a lot different than amelia island and mm. atlantic beach mm. <laughs> yeah my cousin's they, doing some stuff up in fernandina he's, he's it's, he said it's very different the mindset yeah, is very yeah. different but i love it it's a fantastic district the people are phenomenal i mean this is just a this is an awesome area so i i'm i brag on us all the time yeah, I'm kind of, I'm still Duval, but I'm almost Nassau light because I'm off of Otis Road, which <laughs> yeah, is you're close. just, you know, I'm like two, three miles from Bryceville. So, right. yeah, I go in Bryceville, I go up to Callahan a lot. So, yeah, yeah. that's that's neat. So, what what have you done since you've been at the House, right. State House? So, um, you know, when I ran, I, I ran as a constitutionalist. I think it's really important that, uh, you know, when every, every elected person, whether it's a dog catcher to president, the first thing you do as an elected official is raise your right hand and take an oath to the Constitution, not to a political party, not to a person, not to whoever your donors are, but to the Constitution. So that's what I have done while I've been there. Um, you know, I've helped uh, Governor DeSantis on some of his priorities. We have the uh, you know, banning sanctuary cities in Florida for illegal Absolutely. aliens. So I ran that bill in the House when we were told that'll never get passed. Uh, I did the E-Verify the next year, which is to verify that only um, people that are either citizens or lawfully in the United States should be able to get a job here in Florida. 
Uh, so we ran that, was told that'll never pass. We got that done uh, just this past year, ran several pro Second Amendment bills. So, uh, you know, I've been true to my word. I mean, I tell you, know, they, they, you know, they say that, you know, be the person you said you're going to be on your palm card. Yeah, you know, the, the thing you put in the doors. And uh, that's what I've tried to do. Look people in the eye and tell them, you know, listen, I don't make everybody happy. Nobody ever will. But I can always look somebody and tell them, you know, this is why I voted for something or why I voted against something. No, that's that's uh, apparent. And, you know, and I say this a lot during the show that, that, that uh, the facade that some politicians put up is not who they really are. And you, you don't get that. With They're people. saying stuff to get elected. Yeah. Exactly. And then they, so, they don't back it up. Of course, right. as genuine as they come. And to yeah. me, that means a lot. I, I want to see the same guy that was on the other side of the door before we started in here today. I want the same guy in the public, the same guy, you know, in, in, a, in a restaurant, the same guy showing up. If, if there's two different persons living in the same body doing politics, you know, at home, they're one person and outside there's somebody else. It's not the kind of person I want running in politics because I don't know what I'm getting. Sounds like a politician. Right. Which <laughs> right. needs to change yeah. that whole, that whole yeah, mindset. It does. That's why we're, a lot of people are for cleaning, cleaning out the swamp and getting the politicians out of there and, yeah. and uh, creating term limits for Senate and, yeah. and, and all that. And just yep. turn, turn no, it over absolutely. and make, yeah. ro make room for guys like you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. You're yeah. welcome. No, at the federal level, we absolutely need term limits. I mean, oh, 100%. We have it on us in, in, in Florida. And it and it brings its own unique set of challenges. But I think it's much worse to have a guy. I mean, I, I was born in 71. Joe Biden's been in office since he since, since 73. 71? Oh, 73. So, yeah. so, you know, yeah. 40 career, years. Career politician. Exactly. And he's never held a job in the public sector. Oh, yeah. yet and he's a multi, tell. multi millionaire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, as, the, as all of them are that have been career politicians. Right. So. I'd like to, to it's a whole other show. It up. Um, in, in a African American, I used to be a police officer and he's got f four or five businesses. So he was talking about, he, you know, I caught a lot of flack cause you know, people say what they want, but as far as running a business, guys like Trump, besides the character that you saw, the, the rhetoric that he used, um, his desire to run this country. And obviously the, the economy was booming under that. So mm -hmm. it's important to me that we have those kind of people in right. office. We need to change the mindset as far as politicians in this country locally and beyond yeah. so we as we, we well, beat the drum with that and i think core is that kind of guy so thank you well you know it's, it's, it goes of. back to you know if, if they if they don't make you they can't break you and, right. and a lot of people that get into uh, run for office the first people they run to are the big donors who mm -hmm. you want to write them big then checks. they're beholden to them then they're beholden yeah. and so you know if they like rush limbaugh you say if they don't make you they can't break you yeah, and right. uh so um you know i knocked on a bunch of doors and went to the people and so yeah, should, I, I represent yeah. the people i don't represent special interests that's good so yeah, you, you see it a lot in politics. You see the cliques, you know, mm -hmm. the little groups, and uh, mm -hmm. they exclude you from the groups if you're not following the, oh, yeah. the direction of, yeah. of politics, you know, locally and beyond. You know, yeah. I'm sure that applies all the way up through politics. And Core's always been the kind of guy that nice. just you know well, went to the people first. And I, I try to be supportive. the people's champion. Yeah. So. <laughs> people's champ. That's just, great. Just don't just don't people's get champ. stay that way. Right. To, could, uh, he's never a lot he's of a lot of long enough. He a, has a lot of guys come in with good intentions. They do. And they're in there for 40 years or right. 50 years and, and they get polluted. Right. I won't, I'm well, not going to say corrupted. They get, they just get polluted with, but it's, it's with, like with, with the environment because it's, it's, that's the way the, yeah. the whole political environment Listen, is. I've, I've never know. been smarter. I've never been funnier. I've never been, uh, you know, better looking. They call it the lust of the year. You know, a lot of people fall into that. You're like, Hey, you're, you're elected. You're special. You know, if you're grounded and you know where you come from and who you are and listen, I, I'm married to a, a prior Marine. I mean, if I, if I, you know, if I don't do what I, I'm supposed to do, I'm going to catch heck when I come home. So, uh, you know, it's just, it's just knowing who you are and not change. Like you said, don't, don't change. Just be right. who you said you are. Right. But uh, some people, some people can withstand the pressure and others succumb to it. Yeah, that's 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 the bad part about politics. And yeah, I see Esther's post. Yeah, she's hard as they come. <laughs> that's all right. We like it. We like it. Um, so, is there anything upcoming legislation that we should be on the lookout for? So we, we did a lot of great stuff this past year. Um, so we passed uh, House Bill 1, which was the uh, – the, the public safety bill, public order bill regard, you know, so as we saw riots around the country, we said, you know, don't bring that nonsense here to Florida. You know, right. we're not going to let Antifa come here and burn right. our cities down. And uh, you know, we had some of that in Florida. You, didn't and, you increase, didn't y'all increase penalties for like blocking roadways? Um, and, uh, um, a couple other things, but all related to rioting. Correct. We wanted to send a strong message that everyone has a constitutional to right to peaceably assemble, right. to protest, to petition against the government, but you don't have a right to harm other people, to, to destroy property. And so we wanted to clarify that, strengthen the law. There were some vague laws on the books that the courts really said, well, we can't even enforce this stuff because the, they're, they were old and outdated. And we wanted to update it because public safety is, uh, is important. Yeah, they dropped 
a bunch of cases locally, I think, because the, the laws were problematic. Exactly. So, exactly. The laws. Well, so we, well it's no, there's no coincidence why people are moving from the states and cities where public safety has become a great concern from rioting. And even though they voted for a lot of the people, right. but they're leaving there and coming to Florida. Right. And hopefully, yeah, hopefully they won't keep voting the same. Right. And that's and, what, uh, and I tell people, I said, listen, it's, it's going to be our job as Floridians, as natives who have been here for a long time to when you have a neighbor or a friend that's moved from somewhere else, remind them why they moved to Florida, why it's different, not confrontational, but just say, hey, there's a reason you know, people to get the government they deserve. You left a state because you had horrible government. We have good government here. Continue to support the people that they, that are giving us that. Mm-hmm. Uh, taxes. I, I told you a story. My cousin, you know, he's done he's done fairly well uh, in in the business world, and he had a, a big house on the north side. He just sold it. Um, I don't say the amount, but it was large. But I'll tell you that uh, his property taxes last year were twenty seven thousand, which seems a lot. The size house was on the water, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the people that bought the house were from Connecticut. Um, they're out. They had a similar size setup. Um, I don't know the exact details, but their property taxes ten years ago was twenty two thousand hmm. dollars. Last year, before they moved here, when they decided to move here, their property taxes stand by were one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. Well, same house they had been in. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's how much oh. it, it crept mm. up over the years due to the size. So, I mean that's that's more than people making a year. So apparently that state either didn't have a cap or they felt the need to remove the the annual cap, like right. we have a three percent. Right. So be, and for, that's the for thing whatever about reason, ta- you know, yeah. not having a state income tax is a big deal to me. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think I would live in a state that didn't that yeah. had a state income tax. Yeah. Um, and and y'all do a very good job at the state level keeping keeping taxes low. So. We really try, and I'll give you a, a perfect illustration. So you know, Florida has surpassed New York now as the third largest state. And we're roughly twice, but we're roughly the same size. I mean, we're a little larger now, but roughly the same size. Their state budget is twice as large as ours. And that probably doesn't even include New York City, no. which is probably bigger than the state of Florida. Oh, I'm but sure. But I mean, the people in New York are not getting twice the government services that we're no. getting here. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you why, because there's a lot more people heading south on 95 than heading north. Um, so uh, you don't have to spend every dime, every every session. We put billions of dollars in reserves because we try to run the state, you know, like a business, and it's not a perfect analogy, but uh, we don't spend every dime because it's your money. It's a taxpayer's money. It's people's listening. It's their money. Correct. We want to be responsible with So how do you think that's, that's going to impact us? I mean, we've got all these people coming to Florida. We're going to get more tax revenue, but, I mean, the density is, is I mean, I'm sure you've been out to St. John. You don't. I St. John's County is not part of you, <laughs> right. but you, if you've seen St. John, if you driven I, through St. John's County lately, I have. There, I have. You can't go down a road without a new development, passing a new yep. development, and it's just exploding down there because they got to put. And there's apartment houses popping up. Yep. I mean, literally everywhere there, Jacksonville, and so the density is just getting. It's going to be pretty unreal. Yeah, no, it's a, it's definitely a concern, yeah. and we're going to have to manage it and be smart about it. I mean, the thing we have up in North Florida is land, and I know I yeah. hear it in Nassau County. Nassau County is booming, and it's because there's a lot of land, and a lot of people want to move here for our quality of life. Uh, but so we're going to have to be smart about it because it puts a tremendous um, impact on on the resources, you know, water, infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure yeah. environment, traffic, so, everything. Right? Yeah, yeah I, I've. Uh, and obviously, I, I'm, I, I like the pro growth, but I do have concerns when you talk about that because you know Jacksonville was kind of a, the, what made Jacksonville attractive was you had horse farms to high rises. It was mm-hmm. you know you had a rural mm-hmm. area and you had a, a population dense area. You know you had big city feel and part of it, and a rural feel. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm afraid we're going to lose that. And we're going to be so overrun with people that. Mm-hmm. And you look at other St. Johns County, Nassau County is growing. I, hopefully, there's going to be some mechanism to kind of create a check for that. And you can go out to other counties, like you can go to Madison and Marion County. Some of these other counties are still very rolling open uh, rural areas with horses. And, I, and where I live, there's for, not much for, left. For now, though. Yeah. For now, there, yeah. there's still a lot of rural area, but right. not much. Right. Right. So. I mean, the challenge is, I mean, we, I, I live out at the beach. My family's been out there for more than a hundred years. And so a lot of people that move, you know, say, you know, oh, we shouldn't, you know, we should blow up the bridges. We shouldn't let anybody else over. It's getting too crowded on third street. And I said, well, when, when did you, when did your family come here? You know, yeah. it's yeah. the eighties and 90s. I remember when, when third when street should, was, was too lame. Yeah, yeah. When should we have blown up the bridges? Yeah. And, and yeah. so it's right. tough. I mean, it so it's, it's just being smart yeah, about it. And I think we try to do that. To create but you know, third street, it's all about third street. And I think the speed limit is 35. When's the last time you went 35 down yeah, third street? Exactly. It's average is maybe 30. You're lucky to 
to be doing 30 down right. 3rd Street. So Especially it's, during the summer. I wish I was like that. When, you know, my family's been out there probably 100 years. And when I, when I was out there, you went down uh, Duval Station Road. There was no Publix. There was no First Coast High School. There was nothing out there but woods. And now it's just blown up. I mean, there's subdivisions everywhere. I mean, right. I, every time I drive through. Va- like, valuable this, property. Still the north yeah. side. You know. Yeah. Um, where I'm at is pretty. Of course, I, I've got a benefit of a base, a touch-and-go field. So, um, motorcycle track. I mean, there's still a lot of rural area right around me, but there's not much left. That's well, true. something, you know, talking about the growth, we, we you know, we need to keep uh, the federal government <clears throat> is, is going to set aside money to pay local governments to change their zoning laws. So we need to be very mindful of that. Hmm. Uh, so the Biden administration is going to, is putting for, to, to put, to increase density in mm-hmm. places and get them to change from single family to multi. apartments. Go, multi, more, go multi, more vertical. Correct. And so yeah. we need to make sure as we got, uh, yeah. you know, local elections coming up in 23 mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, we got, we, we elect people who, who are going to reject that and won't mm-hmm. get bought off with the money. That's true. Yeah. I've, I talked to, I talked to Randy yeah. White about that and I, I said, we're, you know, I got this little place coming up, up the road and he said, well, you know, it's still AGR out there. So it's still, you know, um, Two and a half acres, pretty much to build, and there's some rural residential, which is an acre. Um, but good thing is, I got a touch and go field and some other things that kind of slow some of the growth. But you know, it's everywhere around us, I know they're talking about uh, there's that new State Road 23, and then there's a new interchange over there at 301. And there's somebody mentioned there's going to be thousands of homes over there off of like Normandy and 301 area, you know, out there mm-hmm. coming in coming into uh, Bradford County and Nassau or part of Nassau and Duval right there. But that's and you can only widen it back in these neighborhoods. You can only widen these roads so much. Right. We've got a home in a particular neighborhood and they built a, a really nice subdivision across from us. It's gated and we're all in it. The whole neighborhood's nice, but it's a two lane street. So this new neighborhood goes into this two lane street and there's 17 homes, I think 17. So if you think every home's got an average of let's say three cars, husband, mm-hmm. wife, at least one kid. You do the math. That's a lot of cars lot of pulling cars. in and out of that gate in front of our house every day and going up and down the street mm-hmm. now. And then their friends coming over. So just the density in that one yep. that one neighborhood just right. quadrupled. So it's going to be all over yeah. all over the not the city but the state and it's I don't know. It's like to know how I guess what the state's thinking with all these people coming here. What do they have any kind of plan in place? Because they've come here like they've people are coming here like they've never come here before. Right. Oh, and, I mean, and there's I mean every home's you know, you oh, know you, the the demand's unreal. Yeah. So I talk to real estate agents yeah. and, and and people that do home inspections and you know, homes are being bought sight unseen. I mean, people from up bidding north, more sight yeah. unseen. Yeah, like never even hits the market. People right. are paying more than the asking price. I mean, it's just. But yeah. that's a testament once again to what mm-hmm. we've done in Florida. That the gov- we have a governor who's kept the state open. You know, yeah, every yeah. job's essential. I, I, I met with a group uh, yeah. this afternoon at lunch and said. You know, probably the, you know, there is no, there's not a non-essential and an essential job. Every job, if that's how you put food on the table, a roof over your head, that's an essential job to you. I agree. And we need to, uh, you know, we need to keep that in mind. And, you know, I don't think we'll ever shut Florida down again. Not, not under the leadership we have now. That's good. Yeah. I'm uh, going to work in the restaurant business, a lot different than law enforcement. And obviously they look at law enforcement essential, but you know, the, the guy that owns that place, he was trying to get, uh, the servers basically were having a tough time and they couldn't, you know, they couldn't do that. But so he would work them in to do takeouts, you know, mm-hmm. just to try to get up some, put some uh, food on their table, make sure that their bills were paid. And right. that's, it's tough. And when you got a governor like that, it'll leave it open. And obviously the science, you know, they, you're going to have these problems, you're going to have that problem. And it turns out to be quite the opposite that, that our numbers are, we're just probably more successful than a lot of the states that have shut down. Yep. It's a testament to his leadership. Yep. So that, that means a mm-hmm. lot. Well, you, uh, so you, how, you 16, and we're so you've done almost six years in the right. state house, huh. and you're you're going to run for state senator. So let's talk about that a little. Sure. Bit. So um, you're correct. So I'm in my I'm in my third term, and so in January we'll go into the my sixth session. So it's a two year term, and then uh, so Senator Bean is uh, our beloved senator, and he's uh, termed out, so he's finished, uh, and so there's a vacancy, and I've decided to throw my hat in the ring and say I'm going to you know move up and. Uh, I can represent uh, more more people in North Florida and continue the the good job that I think we're doing. Good. What's it? What's Aaron's what's plan? Coming? Yeah, what's he? What's, what's he, he plan? Coming? Not sure. Not sure yeah. what the sen- the senator's going to do. Um, he he keeps his cards pretty close to the vest, so haven't uh, made a decision. I think he's going to have a lot of options, and I think he's probably weighing those. Um, what what area does he cover? So it is once again all of Nassau 
in all of Duval County, except for the portion um, basically in the heart of Jacksonville that Senator Gibson represents. Okay. So it's everything. So it's it's the west side, part of the north side, the beaches, Arlington, Mandarin, oh, um, all of that. What, what, and it's uh, SD4, Senate so District 4. Senate right. District 4, okay. Right. And have you got uh, plans when you get there? I do. I mean, it's to, you know, obviously, so in the House, we have 120 members. In the Senate, there's 40. And so with fewer people, you have, uh, you know, more more ability to have influence. Right. And so I just want to keep uh, you know, fighting on behalf of the people in North Florida, just as I've been doing. And, uh, you know, there's, there's people who would rather have a selection rather than an election. And, uh, mm. you know, I, I, want, I want the people to have the opportunity to have, like have a voice. I like you around that stuff, the, the yeah. selection instead of an election. Right. I like that. Right. So, um, you know, I want to make sure that uh, the people's, people's will is represented, and uh, that, that's what I've done. And I'll, I'll, I'll continue to do that. I like that. The, yeah. pe- the people's will is represented. It doesn't, ma- it doesn't yeah. matter who, what your party is. Right. People are Just, frustrated. I mean, yeah. listen, when I, I'm out there every day, and he listens to people, and they are so jaded and disenchanted and frustrated with mm-hmm. politics mm-hmm. and feel like they get sold a bill of goods and they're lied to, and then you know, you get a slick mm-hmm. TV ad and a mm-hmm. bunch of stuff in the mail, and that person doesn't live up to what they said they were going to be. Oh, you don't even sound like a politician right I now. try not to. No, know. that's not what we need. I mean, you know, Esther's always telling well, me, you know, be, be speechless. I don't be know a statesman. Saying. Be a statesman. Yeah. And, uh, and that means, you know, like I said, I ran as a constitutionalist. I'm not, you know, yes, I'm a member of the Republican Party, but my, my oath is to the Constitution. And with everything I've done, with every vote I take, I try to bounce it off. Now, not every issue is going to be a constitutional mm-hmm. issue, but on the big stuff, heck yeah. Yeah, Second Amendment. Yeah. You know, First I've amendment. stood up to the, you know, and, uh, when a few years ago we had Parkland. And uh, that vote, um, I voted against that bill because I thought it violated the constitutional rights of people. And, you know, we got a lot of heat at the time. We, I mean, when you have, uh, you know, the governor coming to the floor of the House and then the attorney, gen- or the attorney general at the time. And, mm-hmm. I mean, listen, but uh, so I've, I've proven that I can stand up and be independent. Explain and, and that bill for us. Just sure. So obviously there was the tragedy in, in Parkland. Absolutely. And uh, so the state came in and said, we want to pass some laws. And uh, there were there were some ideas that, uh, you know, I understood why we need to do it. Maybe put more law enforcement officers in, in schools, more funding for school security. But that that failure in Parkland was not a failure of of laws. We have all the laws on the books that we needed. It was a failure of enforcement. But you had people who believed that we needed to do something to show people that we were doing something instead of doing what was already there. And I didn't believe that violating the constitutional rights of 18 and 20 year olds was the way to address a criminal act in South Florida. And it was great because just yesterday, a federal court, appellate court ruled or decided that uh, that uh, the um, a federal law um, it violates the Second Amendment if 18 to 20 year olds are prohibited from having firearms. So I think we're ultimately going to be vindicated on that vote. But it's just it's an example of where you know I stood up and said you know no I'm not going to just get my arm twisted and go along. Well, that's when you're using facts over feelings a lot of times. Exactly. People, people want to react with emotion sometimes instead of th- using some sort of logic. And right. you got to and and as you know former cop you you know the the gun laws um, you know that. It's it's almost duplicitous that that they use gun laws to to say that you know we need to st- have more strict gun laws, um, you know the type of magazines. I mean some of these things are just so out of touch with reality. You know we need to cut cut the number of rounds in a specific magazine. If they've ever been around guns or anybody's <laughs> handled a gun, a ten or twelve round magazine makes no difference. I mean it's a, it's a half second reload if, if you right, practice. Right. You can swap a magazine yeah, so, and, and right. you, you can watch YouTube exactly. videos. And right. I've trained with guys that just are blindingly fast, so it makes no difference. Right. So to cut the you know to do this the those kind of things that make you feel better instead of actually have a a, a good result, as in you know stricter penalties for certain types of criminal behavior, right. as mm-hmm. opposed to making it harder for law abiding citizens right. to own those guns. I never cared mm-hmm. if somebody had a gun when I stopped them, and I'm telling you that people with carrying concealed weapons, the carrying concealed firearms, they never were concerned for me. Right. And it wasn't the guy that had a, a rifle with a 28 round magazine that bothered me. I mean, that, that you're going to you're going to deal with that. It was that guy that was a felon that had a gun and sitting in his pocket that you couldn't see. You know, that's the kind of thing on a traffic stop. And obviously, a rifle it, it takes a lot more effort and, and does a lot more damage. But you know, just hearing the gun laws and, and knowing, you know, when you've ridden somewhere in the street and you talk to officers and, and the vast majority of law enforcement support, uh, you know, they're big 2A supporters. So that's, uh, we appreciate somebody on behalf of the public, the, the logical public, if you will, doing that in, uh, 
the state house. Thank you. Well, and yes, you know, Larry, and in, in your in your life as a law enforcement officer, criminals by definition don't obey the law. Don't so the murder's law, yeah. already illegal. Yeah, so, they, he, yeah. so we have all of these laws on right. the books, and when we want to add more, Just all it does enforce, is infringe on the rights right. of the law abiding, the law abiding citizens. Correct. Because right. they're the going to abide by the laws. Care. Exactly. Right. The criminal doesn't care. So they get yeah, they'll, they'll never follow the laws in right. the in the. Right. Law-abiding citizen just gets more and more legislated and restricted as to what they can do. Right. And if the bad guy wants to carry the AR-15 that's going to get banned, he'll get one. And there's so many guns in America now. I think there's, what, 350 million mm-hmm. or something. That you'll never get rid of them. Right. They can go to, try to go door-to-door, it's which anything. will never happen. It's not England. Right. Yeah, yeah it's not England. And, and, so and, it's not going to yeah. happen. And people are afraid, oh, they're, they're going to come to my house and take my That's never going to happen. Because that would make the Civil War look like a picnic. Right. That's never going to happen. No. But they can legislate the hell out of them. They can they can require you to register your gun, give you a one year amnesty period, and if you don't, you're an automatic felon. They can count your you know require you to disclose how much ammo you've got. They can just put so many laws on top of what's out there already and create an accidental it, felons like you were it, about. exactly. And then you know you got to you know either you either comply or you're a bad guy now. Right. Right. So, so that's where we we got to look out for um, is the over legislation. Looking at going forward, you, you've talked about you're just going to do the kind of constitution. Is there any any legislation that you can think of in the future that that or any any problems that you see foresee for the state that that you'll have to focus on in the Senate? Yeah. So I think uh, you know education obviously is huge. Um, yeah. You know, and and you know, so many of our children are being indoctrinated. I mean, it's what what I'm encouraged by with all of the bad stuff that's happening. I'm so encouraged by parents stepping up and saying, "You're not going to mess with my kids." Whether that's forced vaccines, whether that's a critical race theory, which is a foreign, alien, poisonous ideology oh that's God. teaching our kids to hate each other, to hate our country. So that that's one of the big issues that I want to work on either ne- you know next term in the House or as we move forward is, is yeah. giving parents, you know, when people ask me, what's the most important thing you've done in the legislature? And I say it's, it's, it's the expansion of choice to give parents the opportunity to say whether it's public school, private school, charter school, homeschool, homeschool. that every parent has the opportunity to decide for themselves because every parent has jurisdiction over their child, not a teacher, not a government bureaucrat, not some politician. The parents have the choice over their children on how to educate them, how to raise them, what's best for their health and well-being. And that's what I'm going to continue to fight for. That's good. You know, I, I, I look at it and I'm, I'm almost relieved and maybe I shouldn't be relieved. Maybe I should pay more attention, but it, it's infuriating to look at the stuff that they try to indoctrinate kids with. And uh, knowing my kids are graduated, and I don't have to worry about it, but I do. I mean, it's what if what are their kids going to deal with? You mm-hmm. know, crawfish was homeschooled um, through high school. Yeah, through high school. Yeah. Yeah. Homeschool's gotten really popular. And uh, he, you know, he finished he finished his uh, bachelor's degree at UNF two years after graduating, so he's done real well. I mean, right. he's done tremendously, and he's and he's processing for law school, by the way. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. So Congrats. He took his LSAT, I think, the second time now. He's, second time. Yeah. So yeah. he's he's trying to get that score up a little bit, sure. but he's still it's still pretty good. I think yeah. he just wants to. You know, he's, he's ambitious. Yeah, yeah, he's ambitious. So yeah. that's good. And obviously, we wouldn't be running right now. We'd probably be in the Stone Age or in a tent right now working this thing if, if he wasn't here we're running all the uh, the AV and IT stuff. So okay. he does a great job. Um, well, man, I just person to person, I appreciate the work you've done and, and the talks we've had and the times I've called you and just, you know, sought out advice. And uh, um, I think the public will do well by, you know, getting support. Not that my endorsement means anything by, by in, in the world of politics. In fact, it might hurt some people or help some people. It kind of depends. You know, I'm a little, a little uh, obviously, a little outspoken sometimes. But, you know, the kind of guy you are is exactly the kind of guy we need in government. And uh, you, you have my full support, whatever you need. Thank so, you, Larry. I appreciate yeah. that. Thanks. Absolutely. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um, and Jim's uh, Jim's the same way. He maybe not maybe not quite as outspoken as me sometimes. I don't know. About, maybe I'll make him might be a little more cautious. Yeah, maybe a little bit. But sometimes he kicks off. It's kind of nice to watch. Yeah, um, certain certain things, certain yeah. things. But I'm a uh, I'm a big supporter of honest politicians. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Always have been. Of honesty in general. To say that together, isn't it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. It's almost an oxymoron. But yeah. But I've known some, and they were throughout their whole career. You, you, nobody can ever go back and say, man, remember that time they did this or this or this. And some of those guys, they somehow stay in office. Right. And the bad, the ones that are, right. you know, have had their share of, of, um, controversy, 
mm-hmm. but they managed to stay in office. And then you kind of know who the good ones are and who the bad ones are. And, well, and I can tell you, there's I, I you serve know. with some some really fine people, some really good people who are there for the right reasons because they care about their communities, they care about their families, mm-hmm. and so there 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 are good, and it's really important for the people to to support them. And sometimes it's hard to figure out. So I really appreciate the opportunity to talk directly to your, yeah. your listeners and, uh, you know, feel free to call me. Uh, you know, they can call me anytime if they have a question about something I've said or something they've seen in the news. I, you know, I really do try to, you know, if somebody's willing to call my office or come by, I'll talk to them. I mean, if they're just, you know, sometimes we get the angry or nasty people, but, uh, I can't do much about that. But if you, if you want an honest conversation, I'm willing to have that. That's good. Well, we I need to just put you in my cell phone here. Yeah, absolutely. The rest of my stuff. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Promise I won't call you late yeah. at night. Yeah. Maybe no, not. No, <laughs> you know, listen, it, it's complicated. It's tough. And there's so much noise out there in, in, in the, the system world. and the political world. And sometimes it's just cutting through that. I mean, people will call me and go, how in the heck did you vote for such and such or didn't vote for such and such? Let me let me let me walk you through why. And then most of the time, then, OK, I understand now. Thank you for explaining it to me. Right. Even sometimes they'll say, "Well, I don't, I don't agree, but I understand why you did what you did." That's okay. I'd yeah. rather yeah. do that because I can tell you right. that that the, the palm cards you, you mentioned earlier sometimes they come in the mail, and and, and even if it's not somebody I'm going to vote for, the stuff that that certain you know they do opera research of those negative kind of those negative kind of ads, and it's just deafening. Mm-hmm. And 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 look, I do my research, and everybody should do their research. They should see how somebody votes. They should try to talk to them at some point or show up to an event, ask questions if they, you know, if they feel. But, but a lot of people so. don't. A, no, but a lot of people ads, go, these negative call ads. so-and-so go, who are you voting for? Exactly. Or, exactly. or give me a list of who you're but voting for. Don't send for. an ad that's so disingenuous or, you yeah. know, just, it's just falsehoods that you've created that they've had this voting record when it's, it's, you know, it's not what it looks like. And, right. and people need to, people need to realize and do their own research. And that's why I wanted to have Cord on and, uh, you know, uh, Esther reached out and I think this is a good forum for that. And obviously we're reaching a lot of people now and yeah, more than I thought it's actually turned into a job. I, I, I <laughs> so it kind of feels like I, I kind of had a conversation with the other day right. about that. But yeah, I know. You're talking get a little bit. And, yeah. Yeah, getting it's just getting busy. But. It's so important what y'all are doing because, you know, I've always been frustrated and I've told Esther, you know, you can't, you know, on Twitter or Facebook, you know, sometimes these issues, it takes a little time to flesh out. You can't in a 120 characters or 240 characters really get into something other than just slinging mud at another person. That's right. not, uh, that's not who I am. I don't no, attack yeah. other people. You, if you looked at my stuff, I, I don't, I don't I've never engage that. in well, that. Well, well, look at most campaigns. They start out pretty nice. Right. And then when you come down to the two, the two finalists, I'll say, usually it turns into a mud battle. Yeah. Well, that's kind of, you're unfortunately mud, you're losing ground to me. Right. That, yeah. that's, that's but a lot right. of times yeah, a lot both of, of them looks, are. So right. it's just whoever's slinging the best mud. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I have, a, that's pretty I, sad. I have a record. I'm proud of it and I'm put, I'm willing to put should it up be. against anybody. So, uh, yeah, you should be, you know, just, uh, just yeah. I'm glad. I'm, thank you for letting me help. Let well, me you know, we, we, we just we, need we, good. We just need to clone you. The new media, you know, the media sometimes is not our friends and or the media sometimes has a slant and, uh, with this kind of form format and forum, they don't have a slant. There's just, just, just the truth, you know, just let somebody talk. So that's, it's kind of what we want to do. This turned into a hobby, and now it's grown into something that's a lot more than a hobby. So, but it's fun. I'm enjoying it. I get to, I get to have, you know, uh, we've had different kind of people on, and, and not just you, you, but I've, you know, guys that have been to prison and re- and had re- redemption in their life, and 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 been, you know, good, honest citizens and open businesses, and just everybody, you know, from friends of mine to to people that's get involved in politics. We're gonna have Angela Corey on next. You oh, know, just talk about her history, and you know, just being a, a, a somebody that always looked out for victims and took care of law enforcement. So. Um, I appreciate you being on, and uh, if I can do anything for you, if we can do anything for you, you want to come back on at some point? How, sure. When's the, when's the election? So the it uh, it'll be the primary, so it'll be in August of next year, so okay. August of twenty two. Okay. But uh, you know, so we'll go back into session in January. We'll be done early March, so that'd probably be a good time to come back on, and fill you in, and okay. on what's uh, what happened in the legislative session. Be oh, happy good. To do that. Good, good. And uh, yeah. if you need help walking or putting out stuff, well, obviously you. Yeah. Reach out. We'll we'll put that word out. And I'm sure. I, I thought I he was going to look at me and go. Jim will be glad to help. Yeah, yeah. I will, uh, <laughs> Jim will be glad to you go. Offered, put some I'm going to take you up on it because yeah. we. Uh, I've done it. Yeah. I mean, I. Well, that's the way I like yeah. politics is the ones that get out there and actually crisscross yeah. these districts and, and yeah. reach out to the actual people. Cause Knock on doors. It means a lot. To somebody to show up and say, "Hey, you know, oh. this is why I'm voting for this guy or, or gal." Well, I can you tell know. you, I first ran in twelve, knocked on ten thousand doors, ran in sixteen, and I had people. That's hard work, isn't it? Four years later, that said, "You knocked on my door." I mean, I could. It blew. 
remembered you. that they mm-hmm. remembered a 30 second interaction mm-hmm. because I think it's so rare that it people is. actually go out and look you in the eye and say, Hey, I'm Cord Bird. Uh, I'm running for uh, the house. I, I'd like your vote. Yeah. And I think that means a yeah. lot to people. I know it's house. not possible to hit, hit everybody. And a lot of times you're in a neighborhood, not everybody's home when you're there. But I remember everybody that was running for office that ever came to my door. Right. Yeah. And the conversation I had with them and, and the right. impression they left on me. Some exactly. left a good impression. Some yeah. were, they walked away and I thought, I'm definitely not going to vote. I mean, for listen, it's a republic so, if we can yeah. keep it. And if we want to have representative government where it's it's a citizen-led government, then you got to you gotta, you gotta help out the, the people. And yeah. otherwise, Old school, um, you know, yeah. there, there's wannabes and wannadoos and, and a lot of wannabes get elected. That's and true. So, well, a lot of them are relying on social media now right. and they're not going out there and doing the actual physical right. walking and talking. Right. Well, walking Lawton, y'all remember? Yeah, him. of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah, and it's all social media now. How many how many people can I contact or, right. or connect through through social media? So, right. and it, that's great. It works, but it more than that, though, it yeah, takes we more do than a lot over here. So, yeah, but anyway, yeah, we do. Yeah, I think uh, I think we've covered everything. Yeah, and uh, unless good. there's anything else you want to talk about, Representative uh, Court, I'd like to have you back to talk just specifically about two A stuff. Okay, because I, I, I can. That's something I can talk about. He can talk about, and I've got some. Thoughts okay. and opinions and questions. Yeah, sure. I'm a novice and, and, when I come, I'd like to get you to explain a lot of that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. And we, would, and I'd like to, you know, we won't do it today, but talk about your thoughts on open carry because yep. there's always that big push for it. And so, I'm personally not for it, it, but we can save that for another show. But there's a lot of so just to just to things, preview yeah. that because I won't be surprised if you get a people a few people comment. So as a uh, as the chairman of the criminal justice committee, we had a we had an open carry bill that came to my committee, and there've been some some groups have been trying to trash me, saying that I blocked it, and what they've been saying is is a lie. It's not true, and I normally don't call people liars unless it's a it's they really are. a lie, and, yeah. and they are. And so I'd be more than happy to come back and explain the legislative process, why what happened with that bill happened, because um, there wasn't a Senate companion. But, uh, you know, I'd like the opportunity you know, when I get called out for something. I mean, I think I'm the most Second Amendment friendly person, not just in the House, but in the entire legislature. I mean, I, I really won, I wanted a case earlier this year. Very important. So that would be great to come back and really spend, you know, a good amount of time talking about the well, Second Amendment. Right? Like you. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm A plus rated. So. Yeah. We'd like to talk about the laws, of yeah. course. And I'd also like to talk about just to help educate some of the viewers and listeners. Me too. Uh, I mean, I read Guttmacher's book. Yeah. I thought I knew <laughs> what I could do. I didn't know what I could do until I read that book. Right. And that book was about that big. Yeah. And I enjoyed reading it. And before my son got his, but it shouldn't have his concealed weapon. Right. No, I agree. It, um, I said, before you go get it, I'll pay for it. You got to read this book. Right. You got to read it forwards and backwards because I don't want you to accidentally become a felon or, or, or get arrested for carrying somewhere you're not supposed to. Right. And, um, Everybody needs to know that. It's almost too easy. And it's just, I'm pro 2A guy, but I'm not the kind of guy that says you should be able to walk in and walk out with a CCW, concealed weapons, mm-hmm. or CCP, CWP, yep. CW, CWP in, in an hour. Right. There needs to be a little more training, a little more gun education, definitely a lot more education on the law. Everybody should be required to read that book and, ha- and take a test on it or a, a state created yeah. you know book. But yeah, you do for the driver's license, I right? Know. Right. So we got people carrying I think everybody guns, so and a lot of people just they don't they're clueless. I'm on a lot of the Facebook sites of of some of these gun sites, and some of these people are yeah. they're very pro A, but they're yeah. very clueless as to what yeah. the laws are. There's a lot it, of misinformation, it, it, and they're going right. to get themselves in trouble. Well, yeah. I mean, if you go to if you went to my website, FloridaGunLawyer.com, not not trying to give a plug, we're right on the front of no, this. No, give a plug. With, yeah. with rights come responsibilities, and so if, if, as yeah. as responsible gun owners, you know, we yeah. have a right absolutely yeah. under the Constitution, but we also have to be responsible because when we're not responsible or people aren't responsible with guns, then it only gives the opponents but more the ammunition right, exactly. to attack. That's exactly the right. what I was going to say. Exactly. Right. So the more good guys that screw up, the more legislation, the more reasons right. the other guys are going to say. Then, I mean, if felons can be, and, start, and they're still going to blame laws. the people. Right. That, the, so, the good yes, would love guys. to come back and yeah. spend a lot of yeah. time talking about that. I think I think people would really appreciate Absolutely. that. Okay, Let good. us know when you have time. All right. That. Good. All right, that's a, that's another, that'll be guest 86 yeah. in 2022. <laughs> so <laughs> the no, list we're not is building. We got a few, but we're not that. It's only a handful of people we wanted to come back. We'd definitely love to spend more time. Absolutely. We want to get you back then and then get us closer to the election. So maybe yeah. two more times before okay. then, that'd be good. Sure. So you're state rep, state legislator, that's the same thing? Yeah, state rep, state legislator. Okay. Yep. So we'll make sure. Yep, yeah. absolutely. And District 11. District 11, House District 11. Okay, yep. run for SD4. 
and then running for D4. District, District, District 4. Okay. Right. That's Cord Bird, everybody. Right. We're so glad we had him on. Yeah. Larry, uh, Larry invited them. So thanks for coming. Thank very you. much. Yeah. Um, Anything else you want to no, I think that's we'll a wrap. I think we've done done a good job today. And we're going to close it out. I think so. Zach, anything? Nope. Nope. He's got his anything wonderful wife and daughter over there. All right. Then nobody can see. But hey, Bird, that's yeah. that's it with Cord Bird and uh, episode of Real Jacks with Jim and Larry. And we'll see you next time. Yeah.